Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Deepti and let's look at the GT Obsen Gynae questions. Let's look at the first one. Which cardiovascular change is not physiological in pregnancy? Then the answer is mid-diastolic murmur. This is pathological. First heart sound can be split as well as loud. It is all physiological. Shift of apex beat to the fourth intercostal space. This is because of the anterior and upward rotation of the heart. Right? which is physiological and that is why uh, the cardiac image or the cal cardiac cell out on x-ray right will be bigger but it is an apparent cardiomegaly not a real cardiomegaly right the peripheral vascular resistance is decreased because both sbp as well as dbp both of them are going to fall although the fall in dbp is more than the fall in sbp okay Let's look at the next question. Ultrasound is the primary diagnostic tool for which cause of third trimester bleeding? It is placenta previa. Please remember the investigation of choice for abnormally located placenta, right, is going to be TVS. Whereas if we ask you the first investigation, right, for a patient who presents with APH will be transabdominal scan, right, and all patients on TS, if they have a placenta in the lower segment, then they need to undergo a TVS. So, in IOC for abnormally located placenta is going to be transvaginal ultrasound. Okay, then the next question says, what are the classic follicular FSH and LH levels in Turner's syndrome. So, Turner's will have high FSH and high LH. It is hypergonadotropic, okay, hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, right? Why? Because here there is primary ovarian failure, right? So, there is no feedback by the ovarian hormones. So, the LH and FSH levels are high, whereas in Kalman syndrome, which is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, right? The LH and FSH levels are low. Why? Because there is no GnRH release. If there is no GnRH, the LH and FSH levels are going to be low in Kalman's. Okay. Okay. So this is a 32-year-old woman. She presents for her first antenatal visit, right? And you know, uh She's had two singleton births at 39 and 40, a twin birth at 28, two miscarriage, and we have to write the GTPAL, right? So, this is what is GTPAL, right? So, normally we write only gravida and para, but actually it's a five part system where G is this, while P will be in the form of TPAL, right? So, G here is going to be six. She's pregnant for the sixth time, right? term t here stands for term delivery so deliveries at and beyond 37 weeks so this is going to be two then p here stands for preterm deliveries deliveries between 20 to 36 weeks right so here it is going to be one why because she has had a twin birth at 28 weeks so one preterm birth please remember although the babies were twins but it was only one pregnancy and therefore it is to be counted as one right so for twins the t and p are all counted as one okay because it is the number of pregnancies not the number of babies right then abortion she's had two abortions right and L stands for number of currently living children, right? So, this is going to be 4, right? So, the answer is G6, P2124. So, remember the TPAL formula. Please remember, normally when you write gravida and para, gravida means the number of times the woman has been pregnant, Right? It is again not the number of children, it is the number of times she has been pregnant and current pregnancy is included in it. Para is pregnancies that were completed. Okay, so it includes only completed pregnancies. Completed pregnancies, not children, beyond the period of viability. Okay? Which means para will not include the current pregnancy. Okay? Then the next question says drug of choice for endometriosis in a young lady with infertility is clomiphene citrate, right? So if it is minimal to mild infertility or mild endometriosis and infertility, 
then we give her CC plus IUI for three cycles. If this is successful, good. If it fails, then she is going to go for IVF. Whereas if it is moderate to severe, right, endometriosis and infertility, then straight away she will go for IVF. Please do not mark GnRH analogs for, endo, uh, for infertility and endometriosis because you are giving it in a continuous manner. So when you give it in a continuous manner, she cannot begin become pregnant because it is going to suppress the HPO axis. Whereas we need to stimulate the axis. So don't answer GnRH for infertility in endometriosis. GnRH is given for pain management in endometriosis. <laughs>